Okay. I'm gonna test out. I think we're live. All right, awesome. So, here we go. Mm, just double checking here. Okay, so in the last stream, I talked a little bit about not knowing what I was gonna do. So I'm going to probably bounce around between a couple of different projects, but the primary thing that I know that I want to do is play off of my first live stream where what I ended up doing was swatching a bunch of alcohol markers. And I will pull that out here. I also think the quality of the stream should be a bit better. I have been kind of experimenting a little bit, trying to figure that out. So I did these swatches of my alcohol markers, and these are the Ahuhu markers. And I figured that now that I've swatched them out and it's a little more accessible to actually draw, I would take advantage of that and try out a sketchbook that's kind of been in my stash, I guess, for a good long while now. And this came in a sketch box that I got, I believe, sometime near the beginning of last year. I had six months of it starting in February, I believe. So I'm not sure exactly which box it was from, but essentially it is one of the Crescent render sketchbooks. And if you don't know what this sketchbook is, it's supposed to be a sketchbook that you can use with alcohol markers and it won't bleed through. And if you've ever used alcohol markers, you know that it's pretty much next to impossible to find a sketchbook where the markers will not bleed through. And the interesting thing is this is fairly thin paper and alcohol markers, I don't know if I have a sketchbook here, but will bleed through watercolor paper. So you can have the thickest paper and it will still bleed through. But this sketchbook isn't supposed to do that. I think it has some kind of something between the pages, like inside of the paper, to make that a little easier. Or that's just the, their whole tactic. But I've never tried it out, mostly because I'm a little freaked out by the idea of the sketchbook in general. But I thought... Since I did do all those swatches, it would be a good thing to try this out. So, yeah. I skipped one page because of the way it's glued to the front of the sketchbook. I may go back to that, I may not. Sometimes I just skip the first page entirely because less pressure. So, this is a Prismacol... Prismacolor Colorace pencil in lavender, and I know a lot of artists use the Colorace pencils. I've seen people mostly use red and blue. I know Jake Parker, the Inktober guy, uses a vermilion one. I just like purple, so I use this for a lot of my sketches. So I was thinking, since I don't really... I haven't really done a lot of portrait work so far that I would take the time to draw some of that. It's really a lot more of what I do typically, and so far my streams haven't really incorporated that, so I'm just going to jump in here and start sketching out a face. It's a good way to test things out for me. 
because it is so natural to me to be able to draw faces and that's just an experience thing I think I've drawn more faces than I have anything else so it just is a thing that I'm very comfortable with so just going to sketch in very lightly at first just because I don't want to become too confident with the lines before uh, I've decided if I like them. And even though these are erasable colored pencils, sometimes they still aren't a big fan in general of just the concept of erasing. See, I don't like that nose. I'm going to go in with an eraser. I've actually worn down the eraser on my Cola Erase pencil to nothing. This is one of the Moo erasers, and it's probably the best eraser I've ever used. So that's nice. I have a few little guidelines in here that I put for most of my drawings of faces. I've been thinking of different class ideas that I want to work on and I think possibly drawing a face might be something I'm interested in working on just because I think I've gained a lot of tips through the years and I'd like to be able to share that. So I'm going for a more square jawline here with some pretty angular looking eyes. So I've actually set today's stream to be a little bit longer than I typically do them for. And my first stream was about an hour and a half. My second was about two and a half hours. And both of them ended up going, I guess, what's the right word for what I'm saying? They didn't really go over. The first one didn't because I didn't actually schedule it. Um, but the second one ended up going over in time. I went for about half an hour longer than I had scheduled. Just because I was so caught up in the work that I was doing. But we'll see what we end up with today. I set this dream schedule for two and a half hours, I believe. So, yeah. It also depends a lot, I think, on what I end up doing. Because if I'm just doing this drawing, I'll be done quite a bit sooner than, you know, if I go through... all of the things that I want to do. I'm going to erase this ear and fix it a little bit. Match it up a bit better. So yeah, this marker illustration is the one thing I definitely thought I was going to do today. And then after that, I am a little uncertain something I've been working on 
kind of figuring out are digital stamps for my Etsy shop. And these are basically meant to help you incorporate artwork into, say, collage or an art journal or some sort of mixed media piece. And I'll actually have some sample prints over here that I was working on. Uh, some different sizes, resizing and what's not. But these were some mushrooms that I had done and turned into stickers. But I thought, you know, having the line art version available for people to color in themselves could be fun. So I was thinking maybe if we got to it, we could do something like that and we could design some sort of digi stamp. But we will see. It's very um, up in the air right now. I don't know exactly what we're going to get to and what we're not. Another thing I was thinking about doing was putting together an oil palette. So I have a painting I've been working on and I did an underpainting in acrylics and I wanted to go and add the majority of the details and the painting itself with oils but I don't know it's kind of hard to stream um, for me anyways it's kind of hard with my current setup it's kind of hard to stream oil painting because of the location of my computer and just the way that that is set up. My computer would be in the background of my easel that is a tabletop easel and it just there's a lot that might be difficult to do. I'm not completely opposed to streaming oils in the future but because I am already so unfamiliar with oils. I don't really use oil paints very consistently. Because of that, it definitely doesn't, um, I don't know. I, I would need to figure out a better setup before something like that would happen. This girl has very large ears, I think, but kind of like that. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doodling really. This is meant mostly as a test for the swatches that I did and also just for my markers in general. Um, some give her some cheekbones whether they're pronounced or not and the finished thing is yet to be determined at the at the side of the nose her cheeks could be like right here there were some I like to give characters piercing sometimes just because I like piercings and I don't, um, I like to live through the characters that I draw, so that's always fun. Trying to... And of course, the longer I sketch on this, the more refined it will get. But I am thinking that what I will do is 
use the markers before I do any type of line work. And there are multiple reasons for this. But one is simply, I don't know which of my pens react to markers being placed on top of them. It's sometimes hard to figure those things out without a little bit of trial and error. I'm also trying, a big thing for me this year has been to try to be a little more creative with the clothing that I give my characters. Just because... I've never been very good at that. So, give her more of the definition of her body features. <laughs> and this is going to be kind of a flowier shirt, I think, because of the tiny size of the sketchbook. As you can see, it's pretty small. Because of the tiny size of the sketchbook, I'm not completely sure how exciting I can get with the shirt. I'm gonna do my best, but... some sort of trim across the neckline could be fun. I'm gonna test out something. Some straps underneath. I kind of like that. It's very strange for me to record or stream while I'm doing any sort of sketching. Uh, Sketching is not necessarily the part of drawing that I enjoy the most, but with people and things like that, I definitely am a bit more familiar with it. I might end up giving her, well right now I'm giving her some sort of ribbed pattern design to the neckline of her shirt. That's a thing I sometimes forget with clothing is that it's textured. <laughs> Maybe instead of a flowy shirt we can do kind of a sweater or a, how is this called? sweater. According to some people, a sweater and a sweatshirt are two different things. So, adding that texture to this top is kind of fun. No, I'm going to darken up some of these lines, but it's not really as necessary. It's just kind of for me, I guess. Sometimes when I do these types of drawings, I'm like, well, I'm just going to end up covering these lines later, but it's fun. Like, I didn't really have to give her eyelashes and eyeliner and everything right now, but it's one of my favorite parts of drawing eyes, so we're going to go with it. To 
define her actual irises a little bit more, make it easier to see on camera. It's the only thing about this purple is it's not quite showing up as well as I would like on camera, but... It is what it is. I'll get it a little closer here so you can see a little better what I'm working with. Some sort of huge massive earrings. Does that fit her style? I like it. I think it's looking pretty good. I'm also encouraged just seeing that I think the quality is translating a bit better. I think it should be... 720p as far as the resolution is concerned. It was recording at probably, was it 240 even? It was really low. It was way too low. You could hardly see anything. It was just a general pain. It was a painful experience for me. So if that is indeed fixed, Pretty happy about that. Pretty, pretty happy. Um, so, I think we kind of have this sketch in a place where I'm pretty happy with it. I was thinking about maybe giving her some flowers just a little tiny flower crown. Nothing too fancy, just like some little doodled flowers. Because this is a test, but I want to make it a little interesting anyways. So we'll put some little flowers in her hair. Again, nothing too fancy, just going with that could be interesting. We can do these in different colors and just generally make it fancier. She kind of looks royal a little bit, which I'm a fan of. <laughs> I've been really into, on Pinterest, looking up resources that are kind of fantasy-based. So not just exclusively armor and things like that but I really like those but just generally crowns and it's always interesting to me to see what types of references or resources make their way into my work because I am a really big fan of Victorian aesthetics but then when I combine those with darker themes, which is then combined with medieval stuff, it becomes something different. Something all of it, all its own. And I'm a big fan of that. Test out something here. Mm. I was just testing out some kind of like crown design, but I don't think I'm going to go with that. I might put some little petals floating off into the distance because that's a reoccurring theme in my work. The oil painting I'm working on that I was talking about earlier does have some petals flying off of it as well. That's kind of a theme that I developed during Inktober. I just really liked the way that it looked. And it's kind of become a part of my things ever since. It's 
So I think since we're almost done with this sketch, we can really jump into colors and again, since this is going to be using these marker swatches that we did in a different stream. And yeah, I'm just going to try to figure this one out. Maybe we'll start with the flowers and we can create some kind of color palette based on the way that the flowers turn out. So the first one that's kind of calling to me, I guess, is to do some of them in pink, just because pink flowers are nice. And we'll do them a really soft pink. So maybe this one, 140, looks nice for what I'm trying to do. Mm. Or maybe 135. We'll go with 135. Which honestly doesn't look like a pink on it, but that's the whole reason I ended up doing these swatches is because the way that these marker caps look in comparison to the way they actually apply to the paper is drastically different. Make this one flying off to the side, some kind of... I definitely want to incorporate some leaves here. I think that would be nice. And maybe some yellow as well. One of these can be... The interesting thing about sketching in purple like this is that it does have kind of a very mild reaction to the alcohol markers, which I don't hate. I actually really enjoy it. We'll do dark yellow for some of these as well. That's very dark. The only thing about my swatch paper that I have is that it is swatches and tells me generally what color it is, but it's always better to swatch on the actual paper that you're working on. And this is more of a marker paper, whereas this is a marker paper, but it's a different type of marker paper. It's the non-show-through kind. So I really like how those colors are looking together. Maybe I'll go in with some greens just so I can get some leaves in there. That can be fun. It's a very dark green. But that's why I'm doing a sample. I wanted to test out how it was, how I reacted to having a swatch sheet of my colors and on this paper specifically what I'm learning is I have to be prepared for things to turn out much darker than I expect them to so let's go for this spring green color and see if that gives me a lighter one yeah that's more what I thought I would get but that's all right Fun to do a little bit of experimenting anyways. And 
as I'm working on this, I'm kind of trying to consider what other colors I want to use for the rest of the piece. Like one little leaf flying away. So with these colors, a blue would look nice. And I don't know if I want to do blue for her hair or maybe her eyes or her shirt. Again, hard to say. Let's do her skin. What are some good skin colors on this sheet? Again, I have to remember, everything's going to be about 10 times darker than I put it down as, which is fine. I just, I'm a tiny bit nervous. Let's do this one. So this is the color I'm thinking of using for the skin tone. It looks kind of tanned. I'm expecting it to come out darker. I want it to. I hope it does. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's what I wanted. I'm so unfamiliar with this paper since it is completely a test, the first time I've ever used this sketchbook. So, a little unsure of how to use it. It runs a bit, which is interesting, considering this is a sketchbook meant to be used with markers. It's interesting that they're bleeding out as much as they are. But it's just an adjustment period, I guess. it evens out that's interesting so the way that I'm applying the color down is a little bit streaky again just me trying to get used to the paper but it seems that the paper may be evening it out for me a little bit which is really cool if that is indeed the case I'm not expecting it to even out perfectly but it's definitely drying lighter than I'm applying it. We're at that very scary stage with markers. That happens every time I put markers down on paper before line work. And that is being completely unsure as to how the finished thing will look. There's always this phase with markers, I feel like, where everything looks very terrifying, and then you add your line work and everything kind of comes together. Now, the question, again, becomes what color do I use for her hair? Black could be interesting. Black would definitely contrast. Blue would finish off a triadic color scheme, which could be cool. Which would be red, blue, and yellow with a hint of green. I'm also going to come up here and start kind of testing this out a little bit. Adding some deeper shadows and seeing what it looks like once it dries a second time.
This is just the same color applied over the top, though. It's nothing... No changes as far as the actual color is concerned. And I might go back in after the fact with darker shadows, but right now I'm just trying to get in the most basic ones. Something I definitely get a little nervous about with markers is interesting color usage. So when I'm using watercolors or when I'm using, um, that's another example. Watercolors especially, colored pencils also. I like to use blues for shadows, very dark blues, or also purples can look interesting. But when I get into markers, I get like really nervous to try things like that. I think just because they feel so permanent, markers do, as opposed to something like as opposed to something like that, where a watercolor, you can kind of pull some color up, or a pencil, you can try to erase it. Colored pencils don't really erase that well. But I tend to lose a little bit of my adventurous self when I'm working with markers, but maybe I will go in with some darker blues or purples here on this one just to try to push outside of that. Hello. How are you doing? You working on something or just popping in? do her hair in a really light blue just to kind of emphasize the pastelness of it all. I think it might look nice. Markers are doing well. They're uh turning out a little darker on this paper than I expected them to, but I think that's just natural considering it is a different paper than what I swatched on. But a GIF of your painting process for like Twitter or something? What's it for? I don't know where I would put a GIF of something like that. That's cool. Oh, a gift, or a gift for a painting process. Two different things. For me, I think a lot of the whole marker dilemma with my whole being 
slightly nervous about them just comes from a lack of experience, I think. I don't use markers as much as I use a lot of other things, considering... Or which is strange, I guess, considering the fact that I have quite a few of them. So I guess that's why I wanted to do them on stream, just to kind of get me into a place where I'm a bit more comfortable with them. trying to consider more colors. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go back in and pull in some colors from different areas of the drawing. So down here, I can give her this really soft pink, really soft pink sweater, sweatshirt, whatever. using the chisel tip for the first time in this drawing. They are. I really like markers. I just get very... I don't know if nervous about them is the right word. I just forget that I have them more often than not. Like, I do get nervous with them, but that's not why I don't use them. I think I just forget because I do like using watercolors and things like that. I really like giving characters gold eyes, so I did that. <laughs> a random thing is in my universe that I write in. Uh, one of the groups of, really they're aliens. They're, um, they basically just look like humans with gold, gold eyes. And that's pretty, um... But they're supposed to be like a fantasy race, so they are, they're aliens, but they live on a planet in which it has advanced to use magic as opposed to science and things like that. So yeah, that's a fun, fun little tidbit of information. So every time I draw a character with gold eyes, I just assume that they're Vistian, which is what their name is called, the name of the race, the species. Yeah, the <laughs> I definitely don't talk about my whole universe as much I, as I would like to. I tend to get caught up in the drawing parts and then I just forget that, oh yeah, this, people don't just automatically know the things about the story that I know. <laughs> I guess I've just been so invested in it for so long. Like the initial ideas for it started coming up when I was probably 14. So like, seven years ago so it's been a long time in the process and I forget that people haven't quite steeped in it for as long as I have I have this really dark or not really dark slightly darker pink I'm gonna start oh okay darker than I thought all right well I need to be better about darker shadows anyways. I 
I maybe will alternate between this marker and a different one. So I'll lay in some darker dark shadows with this one and then I'll find a slightly lighter one to do some different details with. Details up here in the flowers. Okay much darker than I expected. So, hmm, what are we gonna do? 87 maybe? It's still a guessing game. I swatched these all out and it's still a guessing game. probably going to dry even lighter that is a weird thing I will mention about these markers is they are really cheap and really nice for their price but they dry funky so sometimes colors will dry lighter or darker than what they apply as but not necessarily consistently so really dark colors might dry lighter or really light colors might dry darker like I don't mind that they dry a little different than they are because most markers do that but from the ones I've used they typically either all dry lighter or all dry darker not depending on the marker but It is what it is. And I still enjoy using them, so. It helps me take some of the pressure off, I think, of myself, of trying to make it perfect, because it most likely won't turn out exactly the way that I expected it to anyways. Let's see how this looks. Seems like a good color to add the hair shadows with. Still in that weird phase where everything looks slightly terrifying and creepy, but we'll get there. start streaming and then I lose track of time so quickly it's crazy I think what happens is I don't realize how long I actually work on things for like I don't expect to spend 50 minutes on a tiny little drawing like this but we're 50 minutes in so 
it's weird to me that we're 50 minutes in because it doesn't feel like it to me. But, mm -hmm. That's part of why I like it though. It's, it's a good way for me to set aside time to definitely sit down and do things. Which is nice. good with the hair. I want to go in with a darker skin color though. That was 100. Maybe do 102. Just for some better darker shadows and then maybe go in even with a blue or something. This is definitely one of the markers I hope will dry a lighter color than it is, but if it doesn't, we'll just go with it and call it her fashion statement. Or just have a really dark light, or a really bright, contrasty kind of light source, I guess. I don't think I'm going to do her cheekbones as defined as I do them sometimes. I kind of like her face looking kind of softer with the contrasting, or not contrasting, just kind of cohesive with the flowers. I definitely want to go back over the top of her shirt with the initial color. Try to blend those colors in a little bit better. So I really liked the initial color that I used. I 
mean, it's really cool that you can completely saturate this with color and it won't bleed through. Like, I've definitely heard good things about these sketchbooks, these render sketchbooks. And that's sort of why I had been holding on to this and not actually using it for such a long time is because I was scared of, you know, wasting it or like whatever. But I figured I've been doing that long enough and I'm never going to be able to have my own opinion of it unless I try it. So here we are. And I'm also going to do something that could be potentially risky, but let's go for it. We'll cover it up with line, line art if it doesn't work. I'm going to try and put her eyebrows in as the color of her hair. But the reason it's risky yeah, is because it's on top of this color. I don't know how it will look. Oh, I like it, I think. Cool, cool, cool. That turned out better than I thought it would. Mm, let's see. Maybe we'll do a couple of shadows with this blue. And we'll see what it looks like. breaking past my nervousness about using weird funky colors with markers. And these are just the tiniest hints of shadows. The darkest places. Not wanting to overwhelm it, just Add a few little details. Yeah, I definitely am trying to be better at shadows and adding darker, darker values because I think for me and for a lot of people, it can be kind of intimidating it's not easy to know how dark to actually go because it's normally much darker than you expect it to be but then at the same time that makes you terrified of ruining everything so it's much easier to just go with midtones all the time so trying to push it is always something I'm trying to do. Um, I think I want to add a little bit of pink to her cheek area. Nothing too extreme, just something. Yeah, see, it's not going to really work. Maybe I'll add it in with colored pencils or something after the fact. Hmm. 
we'll do, what else do I need? I can actually darken this up in that area where I was with that pink. The way that that color laid down was very strange to me. do a gray for her earrings just to get that in there sort of before I forget about it that's more of a blue gray which is what it's called so that would explain it but I like it she has kind of an ocean vibe to the top half of her, not so much the bottom half of her, but... No, I need something to shade her eyes. I think I'm going to do brown, which is what I typically do for gold, so I use browns to shade them. Almost ready to start doing line art. If there's anything else, I can probably just uh, add it in after. I didn't really think a lot about what I was going to use to line this. Maybe I'll use a mixture of things. Maybe I'll use some microns. And then I have a pen that I really like. If it's here, I'll use it. If it's not, I'll figure something else out. It's my little... Save that for later. I think I'll use that for her cheeks, probably. So this is the pen, I think. Yeah. So I really like this pen, and I have no idea what it's called, which is unfortunate. I think I found it on Amazon, but it's really nice because it has kind of firm, a firm tip, but you can get really, really thin light lines and thicker lines, but it's a lot easier to control than a brush pen, which I do like using brush pens, but sometimes it's nice to not have to worry about, uh, your hand, especially because I sometimes have bad hands. I have, um, what's it called? Carpal tunnel sometimes, uh, especially in the mornings. It's really bad, but so anything that helps me with that and not having to struggle so much with control is nice. I'm still looking for a zero one fine liner. I never mentioned that. That's what I've been looking for this whole time. Uh, 
Aha. Found one. So I'm just collecting. Can't completely see the whole collection of everything I'm getting on my desk here, but that's typically how I work. So now we can go in and start going over these lines. And I mentioned this in another stream, but I tend to go quiet when I ink. I try to talk sometimes, but... It's much easier to concentrate when you're not uh, worried about ruining your ink lines. thing about this, the size pen is correct, but it's really worn down. Here's a <laughs> couple more. I'm in a similar situation with pens as I get in with things like um, makeup, like eyeliner or something, where I know it's done and it's finished and I should throw it away but I just have empty bottles for some reason like I'm just very attached to them for some reason probably because I don't wear makeup really at all ever and so I have them for very very long periods of time really see the eyelashes on this side but it's okay they're kind of in shadow so that would make sense see I'm a little better on this side I love adding eyelashes I used to hate eyelashes because they never turned out the way that I wanted them to. <laughs> but. Okay. Now I am going to outline these eyebrows a little bit. I do want to still be able to tell they're blue, but. I want the texture. And now the eyes inside of them, the irises. Something I always find interesting is that the more I draw, it seems like the less I actually draw the lines that I used to. So I imply a lot more lines. Like I don't connect the eyes the way I used to. Or 
you know, you don't draw the entire nose. Or I don't actually connect to the bottoms of the irises at all. Or I only draw the very bottom of the lower lip. I think it is interesting. Just, it's an evolution of style, but besides that, I think it just looks more natural. Because even though I kind of look at my artwork as kind of a comic book type style, and I'm not really going for realism or anything, it adds a certain amount of realisticness to it. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of... It, it, I use a lot of writing examples because I write as well. But it kind of reminds me, there's a thing in writing where they talk about... Um, and I think I forgot. <laughs> what do they talk about in writing? They talk about lots of things. They talk about implying things, not explaining things too much. That's not what it is, though. <laughs> That's a nice thing about live streaming. Just completely forget my train of thought. A hundred percent. And it's gonna drive me crazy, just like it does in my day-to-day -day life. Of forgetting things. So that's good. Loosely, loosely coming in here and uh, outlining some of these flowers. Since they're not incredibly realistic, I'm not too concerned about how I'm doing it. Haha, I remembered what I was going to say. So, comic books, right? Comic book movies. A lot of times, there are rules in that universe that you go by. And it's specifically the logic of the show. So, if people can fly in that universe, and then somebody suddenly can't fly... That has to either be part of the story or it's unrealistic because everybody would be like, what, what's this random person that can't fly? Or, you know, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of a similar idea, I think, with my artwork because... I don't necessarily want it to be realistic, but when you kind of set guidelines within your artwork, you kind of create a, a style, but I don't know, it, sometimes it's hard for me to explain what I'm thinking, I guess. I also, losing my train of thought didn't help that. I probably had a better point at some point in that thought process. But anyways, I switched over to this pen, which, as you can probably see, is nice for doing the thicker outlines. Sometimes I'll do my 
thinner outlines with a micron like in the face area and then I'll come in with a thicker pen like this one to get my more definitive lines. I'm actually gonna put this down and take a drink here. That is a thing I wasn't expecting about streaming, which it should have been expected, but how dry my throat gets because of how much talking I'm doing. My throat gets real dry. I'm gonna go in and add the details to the hair here in a second. That's sort of quickly become one of my favorite parts of drawing people, is drawing their hair. For the longest time I hated hair, and then I developed the way of doing it that I am currently using, and it kind of turned into my favorite part. I'm just glad that I kept experimenting because at one point I thought I had found the way that I wanted to keep it and then I realized that I didn't quite like it as much as I did think I think I did. Of course I'm still experimenting even now. If I think of some new way to try doing it, I'll still I'll still do it. Don't think you can really ever get better if you don't try new things every now and again. I could use a micron, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use this pen and be a little lighter handed with it. Oh, I only outlined one of her earrings. Do the other one. Wouldn't I have been in for a surprise if I went in to uh, line her hair and then just drew right through her, <laughs> through her earring? <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time I've done something like that. She would have just had one earring and some interesting shadows in her hair. <laughs> Kind of 
quote unquote experimenting a little bit with kind of waving the segments a bit more than I typically do just because of how her hair is flowing could be interesting it's worth a shot Something I really do like is the way that purple looks that I use to do my sketch. The way that looks showing through in some areas. Areas like right here in her hair. I think it looks really pretty. And I might even go back in with some purple pencil on purpose and just kind of emphasize that because... I like it, but right now I'm going to go around the outside and erase some of that because there are currently just some very rough sketchy lines around the outside. And again, that paper is still really impressive. The fact that it hasn't bled through. And I know that's what it's meant for. I know it's supposed to do that. But it still surprises me. For some reason. When in reality I should be more annoyed if it didn't work. Um... Yeah, okay, so I'm going to go in with this purple, just in a few little areas, just to see how that looks, combined with the blue. I think that's one of my favorite parts about art sometimes, is how things that are completely by accident can become part of the overall effect. just have to work them in. Maybe on the bottom lip even? I was wanting to add some shadow to the bottom lip. just do it in purple. Okay, now I'm going to go in with the pink pencil and see if I can pull out a tiny bit of a pink look. You really need a darker, a darker color to do this on this skin tone. Um, let's look. There they are. Maybe this one? Let's try this color and see what happens. It's almost more of a red. I just want to add Oh, that's working. Okay, good. I like adding pink to different areas of the face because it kind of brings them to life a little bit. So typically I'll do cheeks, which makes sense. But I'll also do the tips of the ears, the tip of the nose like this and 
that will do it. That'll bring it to life a bit. I'll sometimes add some along the collarbone as well just because I do. And then especially fingers as well. The, the middle part of the fingers. Can really make a character feel more alive than it did before. You had that. And this was also kind of a test to see how Prismacolor colored pencils worked in this render sketchbook, and I think they actually work really well. I was not expecting it. Sometimes marker papers really don't like colored pencils at all. But this seems to work pretty well. Which is nice. I'm actually going to put just the tiniest bit on the eyebrows too. Sometimes I get a little overzealous with the pink, but I like it, so... I'm going to keep doing it until I don't, probably. Um, I definitely need to add some better shading to the nose area. Maybe I'll use this color pencil. I'll use this purple one that's just hanging out. Something else I've been trying to be better at is shading in noses because sometimes I felt like my noses were looking kind of flat, flatter than I wanted them to. So I did a bunch of studies and have kind of been trying to get better at that. Not perfect, but... I'm working on it. And then this gel pen. Oops. Well. of trying to fix this where I messed it up. So, Adding my little gel pen details. It's kind of my favorite part. Another area where I can get a little overzealous sometimes. I try not to. Maybe add a few little highlights to my little flower crown I gave her just because that's nice. Not too many, just on a few of the petals. And I think we're really wrapping this up. Still crazy, I've been going for an hour and a half now, but.
that's why I stream, or I uh, set it to be a little bit of a longer stream, I guess. I quickly found out just how long the things I do take. Okay. I think maybe after a little bit of a detail to the earring, just because they are earrings and are probably shiny. I'm going to call that done for now until I look at it and, you know, a solid three hours and decide that I want to add something else. But that's that little sketchbook test, which I genuinely enjoyed. And we'll have to be careful not to be too spoiled on this paper because this did come in a sketch box and I have no idea how much it cost. And it's probably not cheap. But for marker illustrations and even adding gel pen slash colored pencil details, it did really, really well. I'm happy with it. I'm definitely going to be using this more now that I started it, just because I think a big thing was I was putting off using it, just out of fear of ruining it. But now that it's started, I'm probably not going to be so obsessed with that, hopefully. It'd be nice to not have that kind of pressure on myself for once. Putting away a few of my markers. Now, I have, shh, just fixing those lines a little bit. That's what I mean by I'm sure I'll go back to it later, but, um, so I have a little bit longer still scheduled to stream, about an hour. Some things I was thinking of doing will probably, some of it will take longer than I really have, but I will show you. Last stream, I worked on my sketchbook project <laughs> entry thing, and I worked on this quote page, which was fun, but the thing was, I only noticed after I stopped streaming. I was streaming for two and a half hours, didn't notice. I had written thing twice. So the quote is, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. Really like that quote, really love it. Had written the most beautiful thing thing we can experience and I never noticed. I even penciled it out. I wrote it. I read it multiple times. Never noticed I wrote it twice. So what I ended up doing was I whited it out. It was all originally written in micron pen, but I whited it out. I added more watercolor to kind of try to blend it in a little bit better. And then I used my typewriter to type a couple of the words to kind of emphasize them and kind of try to fix my mistake. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how I managed to do it. I, I'm i glad that I noticed it when I did and I wasn't, you know, finished with the entire thing and never noticed. I think I maybe will do one more word with a typewriter, probably source, just to try to blend it in a little bit better. I'm just glad you can't quite see it as <laughs> you can't really see it. You can kind of see that there probably was something there at one point, but if you're not really looking too close, it isn't that bad. So that was just a quick update on that, which 
I still like it and I liked it then but I do think that I like it more even with the typewriter text so I guess it's one of those things that was a mistake but turned out okay in the end anyways which is good um I knew that I wanted to I was thinking of doing little digital stamps designs but I'm sure that will take longer than I have I guess I can show I was gonna maybe prep a oil palette because I want to start working with oils more and I was watching a video about prepping a palette and how to do it and I figured you know while the stream is up I could do that but this is the painting that I'm working on and it's pretty big which is why I can't really figure out how to stream it that well but it looks kind of like that and these are just tones it's not the finished colors or anything it'll be normal skin color for a human it's not going to be gray but it was just kind of roughing in tones and things still very unfamiliar with oils this is actually acrylic and i was just doing a tone study kind of thing um but because of this i thought maybe i could set up an oil palette both to motivate me to use the oils because they're out and drying on the palette and I don't want to waste them. And then also, I might put this up here. I still like that. And then it's a fun thing to do on stream. Now these are actually, I'm kind of, um, I don't know what the right word is. I'm a little scared of regular oil paints because of the toxicness of all the chemicals and blah 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 that you mix into them. So these are water mixable oil colors. So they're basically oil paints, but they're you can wash them with water as opposed to whatever you wash regular oil paints with, like turpentine or whatever. So, yeah, I've not actually used regular oil paints before, but I do like the way that they work. They seem to work pretty well from the paintings that I've done with them. So, I like them. And I think, whoa, this is my kind of dirty palette, but it's all dry. This I should scrape off. That's how long it's been since I used these oils. I should use them more. And that was kind of one of my goals for 2018 was to be better at working on painting, specifically oil painting and digital painting. So things that I don't do a lot of. Um, so we're going to try this. And this could be a total fail. And that would be pretty swell. But what they were saying is you set your oil palette with your three colors, your three primary colors, and then you put white in the middle, or then you mix them to create their secondary colors, and then you add white to each to make tints of them. Um, I have a brown because I don't like mixing brown. I know how to mix brown, all three primary colors, but... I just got really annoyed of mixing <laughs> mixing brown, so I bought one brown. But other than that, I haven't gotten so invested into water or any kind of oil colors that I wanted to invest in more colors, just because, you know. I 
I don't want to spend all the money on oil paints if I don't use them. So, yeah, I'm just going to work on trying to set this up, I guess. I'm still a beginner at this, so... As I said, I could be live streaming a disaster, but it'll be fun. I don't know if you can really see everything. You can. Okay. Plus, the thing about oil paints that I will say is they're really nice to mix. I love mixing colors, and I'm... Like, that's why everyone's obsessed with mixing oil paints on Instagram, because they're beautiful. And I really love it. So, try to mix a green here. Yeah, I'm hoping with my live streams, I like to, I've been trying to just do things that I enjoy doing or that I just need to do anyways. So, it's nice that other people enjoy it. Now that's a very like lime green, which I like. I'm probably not going to use a green that's very different than that so I'm probably not gonna mix one unless I need it obviously I could just add more blue and I would have more of a quote-unquote regular regular one but I'm just gonna go with that for now um let's do an orange mostly yellow I'm not completely familiar with these colors yet, so I don't know exactly how much of everything to mix, but I just go by the general rule of thumb that you typically are going to use more of yellow than anything else in a mix, like an orange or a green, because the blue and the red are so pigmented. actually going to mix a tiny bit more orange maybe I just need more yellow the thing I was watching when I was watching prepping an oil palette they were very like one of the things that they emphasized was making sure you had enough paint because once you started painting you weren't going to want to stop to mix more paint which is a fair point because the oil painting that I have done thus far, anytime I had to stop to mix colors was kind of annoying because I didn't really want to do it and I just wanted to keep painting. So making sure you have enough color is a I think it's one of those kind of tips that you get from people that have done lots of oil paintings, right? So I don't know that from personal experience, but because I watched people that had lots of personal experience, it seems like one of those tips that you're gonna get from someone that knows what they're doing. Now I think I'm gonna use mostly red with a bit of blue. The thing about purple is I use a lot of purple in most of my everything because I love purple. So I'm gonna mix a lot of it. That wasn't enough blue, I don't think. Yeah, the pre-mixing, it's fun. I, I love, I love mixing paints in general they're really just it's nice I usually typically use um, a lot of um, 
acrylics when I was younger, especially. I pulled away from acrylics a little bit, but the thing about acrylics, they're a lot easier to mix on the fly. Um, but the interesting thing about oils, from what little experience that I have, it's, it's a lot is that it's a lot easier to mix them on the painting. Whereas with, um, that's more of a violet. We'll go with that and maybe lighten it with some white and see what happens. Um, the thing about oils is you can mix directly on your canvas. So if some color isn't working the way that you want it to, it's very easy to just add the color directly to the wet paint and then just do that which is not something you really have the pleasure of doing with acrylics because they dry so fast. Okay, now I'm gonna do white. I'm gonna add white to all of these colors. Mm, put it over here. I got the same color white, or the same um, amount of white paint as the rest of the paint, and I'm sure it's going to be gone first, but... That's any white paint I think you use. also think the interesting thing about pre-mixing colors is, you know, I don't necessarily know exactly what colors I'm going to use on the painting that I'm working on, right? I have some ideas, I have some concept sketches I did, but sometimes that can change, you know, you can change your mind while you're in the middle of something. So the idea of mixing all of the paints is not only a lot of fun, but also very convenient because you never know where your painting is going to take you. That's a pretty color. If I can get a bit closer so you can see. It's um, a bit more red than I normally mix my purples to be, but Maybe I'll go with it. Maybe I'll keep it for now. Um, we'll do a pink over here. Actually, we'll maybe do it up here. It seems like it wants to mix with the orange, so. I think it will depend on how thick um, your layers of paint are, right? But, I mean, when I was working with it before, it seemed like I would have it on, I could have it on there for a week and a half and it would still be workable. And then, it even after that, it would sometimes have a little film over the top of it, and if you pulled the film off, you could still work with it. I think that's the big appeal of oil paints for a lot of people, is that they're very, very long-lasting. Which also makes your paintings reworkable for a very long time.
I'm gonna need some more white, I think. <laughs> so we're gonna do a light orange next. It's fun. Also, I just really like color, so that's another reason just color mixing is fun. I also might mix a skin tone as well while I'm at it. Mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking I would go for a darker skin tone. Um just because of the colors I was briefly considering using. So I might mix one of those and uh, go with that. All of my devices are trying to die though. Plugging in my computer right now. My phone wants to die too. I can kind of plug it in from my phone to my computer. And that's kind of a skin tone, like if you added more brown to that, you add blue to that, it could be a lighter skin tone, especially. Um, and now, we'll do, uh, let's do green. We'll do the yellow last. It also, <laughs> pre-mixing all your color, even though it does last a long time, you still don't want to waste it. So it does motivate you to use colors maybe you wouldn't typically use. Or, you know, I, um... Maybe I'll do a painting with the rest of the color left over or something. You don't, you never know. Like, I don't use greens very often. But I'm mixing greens, so I should probably use greens. last bit of my white paint over there. I can squeeze out more if I need it, but I don't think I will. That looks like like a lemon cake of some sort. Oh, 10% battery on my phone. Okay. There might be a tiny bit of shaking while I try to figure this out. Try to thread. Okay. My phone is on the... flexible stands. It's clipped to a shelf above my desk, so it's not the most stable thing in the world, but. All right, now I am gonna mix one skin tone. Well, multiple skin tones. A lighter version and a darker version. And I'm gonna do it Move so you can see. Okay. So. It's a brown. It's a raw umber. Not quite the exact brown I want. I'm probably going to... That is the thing about me with skin tones is I do mix them. I just 
add colors to pre-existing colors. Like I can mix brown, but I don't just use normally. I don't just use like default browns as my skin tones. Like this one was too dull, so I'm adding more red to it. Just spread it out so I can see what color it is. Okay, so I think that's good for like the main skin tone. I am gonna need a lighter version of it, I think. So maybe I will squeeze out a tiny bit more red, uh, white. highlights and things it also adding white makes it much easier to see what color you have like this is very dull I don't like it to that dull I need some more red I think Maybe some pink. But this is primarily going to be, I don't think that's gonna be my main skin tone. It's just gonna be kind of a, um, highlight skin tone. much better okay that's much more what I wanted I think it's always hard to tell before you're actually working it on a piece but again the interesting thing about oil colors is that if I decide this isn't what I want and I need more of another color in it I can always do that pretty much done mixing these colors which I love this even if I have seen people with much better contained oil palettes I just love the kind of sporadicness of this one it's kind of fun um, As you can see, lots of purple. Again, really love purple. The colors I was kind of thinking of using were purples, but then also um, some lighter orangey colors and some just kind of those types of colors. So I might end up mixing more, but I am glad that I took the time to pre-mix this, and now I have motivation to actually work on that oil painting, which is nice. Because now I have no excuses about needing to mix paint. The only excuse is that if I don't use the paint, it'll go bad, and I'm not a big fan of that, so... And it would not be unheard of for me to procrastinate something for the week and a half to two weeks that it takes for that to dry. <laughs> Put this away. And yeah, 
now I'm kind of at that point where now that that's been mixed, I'm not quite a hundred percent on what to do. I have about half an hour scheduled. I might end early. Of course, it's funny that, you know, the one day that I decided to, um, extend the time of my stream, it's the time that I don't need the extra time, but I guess I could show these again. I showed these near the beginning of the stream, which are these digit stamps that I'm working on and I have listed in my Etsy shop. I kind of want to work on coloring them slightly. But I was thinking of doing a whole stream on that later once I have more, more of them. I just really like mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I mean, we did a bit, you know, did this little marker illustration, which I'm really happy with, did my oil palette. The other thing that I was going to think about doing were actually drawing out some digit stamps, but the problem with that is it will take longer. I mean, this took me, you know, a solid while to do. I think it was, what, an hour and a half. Um, my battery is draining faster than it's charging on my phone. So I guess it's really probably, <laughs> probably time for me to go. Um, unfortunately I didn't quite uh, stream for as long as I wanted to, but I think, uh, I'm still in the beginning phases. I'm still trying to figure things out, trying to figure out exactly how the whole streaming thing works and how I really want to sort it out. So I think it's okay if I'm a little off every now and again. Maybe I should just start to... Excuse me. Start my streams at 2 and then end whenever I end. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely let you guys know about future streams, both on Twitch. I've been setting, I've been setting things up on Twitch where I'm setting events and you can either just see them and then decide whether you want to come or not, or you can actually, I think, set to be notified when that's happening, which is kind of cool. I tried to set notifications for my own stream to try to remind myself of my own streams, but it did not work. But I think you can do it. So you can do that. Or I'll probably, I'll definitely be posting on Instagram. I'm posting little pieces where I say, okay, this is my Twitch stream time. I'm live now and then I just archive it when it's done so if you see that over on my Instagram it says I'm live I am live and I'll take it down when I'm done so yeah I think that's all I got for today um thank you for joining me and I will see you guys in the next one I have to figure out how to turn it off <laughs>